Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is Wednesday, May 10th, 2023. Uh, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, do me a favor, subscribe, like, click the bell icon. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, let's keep this trend of a perfect five-star show. Click those five stars and leave a, leave a comment. And also for all the listeners, just a PSA. I will not be putting out a show tomorrow. I'll be back on Friday. So I apologize about that. But look for a show on Friday and a long form on Saturday. Let's get into today's headlines. As you guys know, the European Union passed the Markets and Crypto Assets legislation last month, and it's a comprehensive framework for crypto regulation across the 27 country bloc. Well, Hester Peirce, the commissioner for the SEC, said this could serve as a good model for us, meaning the United States. She continued to say, I think that is something that we can learn from and draw from. But whether or not that will take a little longer for us, I don't know. She added, if we built a good regulatory regime, people would come. I think you'll see that with the MICA. So what is Estonia doing right now now that that framework is passed in the e European Union? Well, they are rolling back or slashing their crypto-friendly incentives. Estonia has given up on their attempt to be the world leader in digital assets. According to Estonia's Financial Intelligence Unit, the reason why they're doing this is because that there's a lot of bad actors skirting safeguards. And how are they doing this? They're doing this by appointing people as board members in official documents without the person's knowledge or appointing fake identities with fabricated CVs. They're also submitting business plans that were identical to other companies and lacked any logic or connection with Estonia. Also, providing poorly translated documents from other languages that lacked coherence. So now that they're cracking down, what's the effects? Well, they went from 650 digital asset service providers in the country to only 100 licensed digital asset service providers left, which the slash of regulations is gonna hurt Estonia, obviously. However, if the people that were going to Estonia were just doing going there because they can skirt regulations, it might be an all around positive impact for the industry as a whole. So what are we doing here in the United States? Well, President Joe Biden's on a rampage again about these tax evaders in crypto. He says that there's tax loopholes for the wealthy crypto investors, saying that this is more of an us versus them scenario and it's the MAGA House Republicans that are aligned with crypto tycoons. These MAGA House Republicans support tax loopholes to help wealthy crypto investors. So what crazy tax loopholes have we found over here to make us even richer in the crypto space? The same tax loophole for the most part that anybody who trades stocks or buys sells securities or commodities can take advantage of themselves what is that and this is straight from the white house's website and the biden administration put this out and says that one way to save some money in the budget is to eliminate the special tax subsidy for cryptocurrency right now crypto investors aren't subject to the same rules of the road as other investors of stocks or other securities have to follow allowing them to report excessive losses a crypto investor, unlike an investor in stocks or bonds, can sell a cryptocurrency at a loss, take a substantial loss, and reduce their tax burden, and then buy back the same cryptocurrency the next day. So how much are these excessive losses? Well, it's the same as any other stock or security that you trade and sell at a loss. It's $3,000. You can't stack up those $3,000. You can, and then declare them one year after the next, but you can't to declare or take more than $3,000 of loss in a year. It doesn't matter if you're buying and selling Apple stock, Tesla stock, or Bitcoin. It's the same thing, $3,000. The only difference here is that with uh, cryptocurrencies, you can sell it and then buy it right back instead of waiting the 30-day period you, as you have to do with stocks. That could be 60 days. I have I've had multiple uh, people tell me different things with this, but with stocks right now, you can sell it at a loss. You can harvest your losses and apply it to your tax bill and then buy back that same stock after 30 days something like 30 days 31 days or so on and so forth with crypto you can do the same thing but you can sell one day and buy back the next basically locking in the same price for your investment now three thousand dollars like i said is the amount you're allowed to declare as a loss you can stack up nine thousand dollars but you only can declare that loss three thousand dollars per year so this is very very misleading from the white house I think that they're really trying to make a political game out of technology, blockchain, and actually things that could be beneficial for the United States, especially when it comes to innovation and the way we do things financially and otherwise. So why are they doing this? I don't know, but it's a very, very bad look to call that all crypto people are now aligned with MAGA Republicans 
and they're stating the same rules that apply to any other markets. I can agree. I will say that, yes, let's change it, that you can sell and buy back the same as securities, 30 days or so on and so forth. That makes sense. Make, make it fair and easy for all the CPAs around the United States. But to say that we're harvesting excessive losses that are the same losses as any other person that is buying and selling securities is absolutely false and misleading. And the CPI news just came out and it's better than expected. We're at 4.9% inflation. And so I just checked the prices. The stock, the stock market is up. We're up across the board. Everybody's feeling a lot better. What is the Fed going to do? Who knows? However, Joe Renison, a U.S. equities portfolio manager at Morgan Stanley, he says that if it comes in line with expectations, which the CPI just came in line or a little better than expectations, I think the market is going to be focused on other issues. If the number came higher than expected, it could make the Federal Reserve's job harder. However, now the Federal Reserve's job is going to be easier. Either we wait, keep the rates as they are and see what inflation does, which is probably what's going to happen, or we start easing again, which is going to make markets go wild and also could affect inflation. Well, is this bringing confidence to people? Well, I'm not too sure about the banks because Wall Street is shorting the banks. U.S. prosecutors are looking at short selling in bank shares because of the recent collapses and how people were basically shorting all of their stocks and making a hell of a lot of money. This almost sounds exactly what was predicted by Pomp when he said, long Bitcoin, short the bankers. This next headline is very interesting because it goes almost against what Bitcoin is inherently meant to be. This free market marketplace, this currency store of value that has libertarian ideas all behind it. Bitcoin core developers are mulling getting rid of the BRC20 transactions. And this is because the seven day moving average for transactions on the Bitcoin network hit an all time high of 593,000, according to data from BitInfo charts. BRC20 tokens, their Bitcoin NFTs, have also surpassed a $1 billion market cap on Tuesday and saw more than $200 million in trading volume in the last 24 hours. This is moving transaction fees up to about $20 dollars and 34 cents a 788 percent increase within the year and basically people are saying that we're under siege by brc20 these junk tokens that are running on the bitcoin network that are clogging up transactions slowing everything down making things very expensive and the bitcoin devs want to do something about it i don't know what to think about this it's almost like you have a open marketplace a free market people understand how to use the bitcoin network some people are saying that this is a great tool that was built on bitcoin which a lot of people say everything should be built on bitcoin a great tool built in bitcoin that is allowing for more uh people to use bitcoin and so this is only positive positive. and other people are saying like well now bitcoin is not being used what it was supposed to be for is a store of value or a transfer of value and people are just building these junk tokens these junk nfts these games and, and so on and so forth these ordinals what is your opinion how do you feel about this let me know. Either leave a comment below or send me an email at bookings at todayinweb3.com. And finally on my radar today, Rosario Dawson is going to star in an NFT-backed anime series from Gala. And this is on my radar for only one reason. It's not because it's an NFT. It's not because it's Rosario Dawson, even though she's great. Um, it's not because there's a new anime series and anime is dope. It's because Rosario Dawson has a relationship with Senator Cory Booker. They were dating there for a while. When he was running for president, they were dating. She endorsed him for president, even answered questions of if he became president, what would she do as the first lady? So what I'm thinking is that now that they have this close relationship, they're not dating anymore, by the way, and <laughs> nobody really cares, but they're not dating, but they do have the relationship, which means she's going to have a senator's ear. Like if Congress passed laws to restrict Bitcoin blockchain, Rosario Dawson at least is going to be screaming in Corey's ear going like, hey, you're messing with my job. You're messing with my money, my salary and the whole future of this project. So can we please pass some laws that make common sense so I can continue to do my job? Please. I think that's a good possibility. Maybe we need more people to date senators that are pro-crypto and going to have relationships with Hollywood as well. <laughs> kind of kidding, kind of not. Now let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And the time is 10.21 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. We have Bitcoin, like I said, CPI data came out it's better than expected so number go up bitcoin sitting at twenty eight thousand one hundred and forty two dollars up two point three percent 
Ethereum's at $1,874, up almost 2%. Tether is number three. Binance is at 315, up a half a percent. And USDC is number five. Running off the top 10, we have XRP, Cardano, Doe, Solana, and Matic. The total market cap is at $1.16 trillion. A BTC dominance of 47.1 and an ETH dominance of 19.5. And that was our show today. Just a quick reminder, I will not be here tomorrow. I'll be back on Friday and Saturday. And until then, happy hodling, everyone. Hey, everyone. The bull run is coming. It's coming quick. And you need to be up to date on everything that's happening in the Web3 space. So please, follow us on Twitter and like, subscribe, share these videos so we can keep you up to date daily on Web3 News.